My name is Dale. I was raised in a Christian home. At some point, I just gradually left spiritual issues behind and uh, quit going to church. My interests were worldly things. Lo and behold, those things brought me on a track to where one day I found myself landing in prison. That was the most awesome wake up I think I'd ever experienced. I remember thinking, I know what I need to do, and I know God has to be a part of this, but I didn't know how to begin. I guess the climax came on the day that my cellmate uh, left. He had a radio, a little Walkman-style radio, and as he left out the door, uh, he handed me that radio. And I think that was the point at which I became broken enough that I knew that I was at a dead end. It was then and there. I just threw my hands up and said, God, it's got to be, it's got to be you. I said, if you can do anything with what's left, uh, my, my life is yours. I remember asking God, you know, if you are really real, you got to show me some way or another. I guess I was asking for miracles like the Pharisees did. I decided, well, I've got this radio now, let's, uh, let's make some time go past. And I ran across a radio station that I'd never heard before. They were talking about Jesus. And I stayed there and listened and listened, and it was a teaching program on what was the local Moody radio station. And that's where my radio stayed. And it was like, this is exactly what I need. This wasn't just a Christian music station. The better part of the day they were offering teaching and I just devoured every bit of it. As the different programs would come on, I would write down the name of the program and the time of day it would come on, and I, I used that as my clock. I literally listened to that radio all day long, every day. And then one day, I heard them give the address of the radio station, and I just wrote that down. One of the first things I did was write a letter to the station. Dale sent a letter. He was, in fact, incarcerated in an environment like a, a jail, there's really very little in the way of resources available. So we actually became, I guess, part of his resource. And it was only just a few days later, a letter came in the mail for me from Moody Radio. In it was a very nice letter from the station manager, wrote back to me personally, and uh, told me that they were praying for me. We sent books to him, and then suddenly he disappeared did not hear from him for three or four years. I ended up serving the balance of my sentence uh, at a facility on the west end of the state. And uh, much to my uh, disappointment, I searched the radio waves there and could not find a Moody radio station. And uh, I can tell you I really missed it. When I was released, I came back to the same town here Lo and behold, someone else gave me a radio because I didn't have one. First thing I did was turn it on and find Moody Radio again. Moody Radio, where you turn for life. Each March, we have uh, a, what we call our annual fundraiser. It's, it's called SHARE. We devote uh, three whole days to going to our radio family and asking them to prayerfully consider supporting Moody Radio. I just knew, even though I had no work and uh, really had no money, no resources or anything, I just had to do something. I think I brought $10 down to the station. Left them my name and uh, left that $10. And I actually ran out the front of the building to see if I could catch him, but he was long gone. And I will honestly confess that I wept when I read the note. Because I realized we talk about the widow's might this was beyond the widow's might. Here's a man who had no job, no source of income because he's just been released from prison and he shared what he had. It has made just an absolute huge difference in where I am today in my spiritual stance. I, I think that the work of Christ would be a lot farther along if everybody could have access to hearing Moody Radio. I really believe that.